Hello and welcome to National Focus. I'm your presenter, Mervyn Matthew. Thank you for joining us. In the headline, Dominica engages a Chinese firm on the construction of a modern hotel and possibly an international airport. And the Dominica's Fire Act is currently under review. Stay for us for details of these and other stories right after the break. If you can believe this... Come by my house and let me show you some movies. Why can't you believe this? Some mothers don't believe their own children when they say they've been sexually abused and they don't report it. Remember, if anyone asks to see or touch their private parts, touches them inappropriately, shows them or forces them to touch one's private parts, has sex with them, shows them pornographic material, or deliberately lets them hear or see the act of sex, then it is sexual abuse. Believe your child and report the sexual abuse. For more information about child abuse, contact these agencies. This message brought to you by UNICEF and this station. Welcome back. Time now for the details of the news. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Scarry said on Wednesday that the team of officials from Chinese firm Anhui Shui, a construction group, are currently in Dominica finalizing plans for the construction of a hotel on the site of the Public Works Corporation. The government of Dominica and the Chinese firm have signed a memorandum of understanding for the construction of the modern hotel. The Prime Minister says this development is government's latest move to increase the number of hotel rooms on the island. The government intends to build a hotel on the site, existing site of the Public Works Corporation. Um, and this was also articulated in the, in the last budget address. Uh, because if we, we believe that if we're to grow our economy, if we're to create sustainable jobs, if we're to expand the tourism offering, we have to address fundamentally the issue of in the inadequacy of rooms and more critically export ready rooms. Because on several occasions we have had to either not accept to host um, regional international conferences because of in inadequate number of rooms. In many occasions we've had to say to uh, delegations, you have to reduce. And, and I do not believe that in the second uh, decade of the 21st century that we should be doing these things in the country. We have to be able to set the platform where we can, ha we can have sufficient rooms in the country to comfortably accommodate the number of visitors we would like to see in our country because having 89,000, 90,000 people coming to the country as stay over, while the number in, in so far as the population is not bad, but to be able to, to, to get more support from, um, more e revenue from uh, tourism, then we have to ensure that we can um, increase on the room stock in the country. So we have signed the MOU to, to, to take the project to the next level. The Prime Minister says design works for the hotel is now being finalized. The delegation has been here for the last um, several days, um, visiting the site again, and we should have um, a reviewed, a reviewed um, design shortly. And that design will be shared with, um, the, with, with the public, with the various stakeholders so as we can get the best product possible. Um, we are also discussing already with potential, um, potential uh, companies with regards to whether it's going to be a Marriott, whether it's going to be a Holiday Inn. So all of these people, we're discussing with them to see uh, which brand of hotels we would be, or which chain of hotels rather, we would be associated with so as to bring the kind of international exposure that would be required in so far as marketing is concerned, if you have one such um, um, chain. The construction of the hotel is part of government's commitment to make the tourism product more competitive and for enhancing stay-over visitor capacity on the island. Meantime, the government of Dominica is currently engaging the Chinese firm on the possibility of constructing an international airport in Dominica. Prime Minister Skerry told GIS News on Wednesday that the Chinese delegation is currently on island looking at a proposed site in Crompton Point to construct an international airport. The Prime Minister said the draft MOU is now before the government for consideration. That delegation is here to 
visit the sites to review documentation we have um, on the Crompton Point site, which was advised as being the only suitable site for an airport in Dominica. And the, once we are satisfied with the contents of the MOU, we shall proceed with signing the MOU. And that company will provide us with a conceptual design of the airport. What would the airport um, look like if we were to pursue the actual drawings and design and construction of the airport? Once we do that, then we will engage ourselves in further discussions insofar as cost is concerned. Bearing in mind that the construction of an international airport is a costly exercise, Prime Minister Skerritt says his government will not borrow money to build one. The Prime Minister says government will carefully examine all possibilities in having the airport financed using grant funds. If you look at the GoFund Social Protection Strategy paper, you will see that the international airport is mentioned in that strategy as being an important element for the economic development of Dominica. So the Labour Party has never been opposed to an, an international airport. What the Labour Party has said, and will, will, will continue to say even today, that the country cannot afford to contract a loan of over four five hundred million dollars to build an airport. And I'm saying to the people of Dominica that under this arrangement, if it comes down to a point where we have to borrow that sum to build the airport, we will not build the airport. What we're discussing with, um, with um, potential um, um, donors and countries, uh, friendly countries, it, once we get these um, document dossier prepared on the airport, we will engage them with a view to see to what extent they will be able to assist us in the realization of our ambition to build an international in Dominica. And I believe we will need to get about 80 to 85 percent of that airport as a grant if, if, if we if we for us to be able to build it. Anything less than that it will make it very, very difficult for Dominica to build an international airport on its own. The Dominica leader described the construction of an international airport as a massive undertaking. He says while the airport will not be built next year, his government will continue to pursue the possibilities of building one in the foreseeable future. We're not saying that the airport is going to be built tomorrow, but it is something that we've been pursuing. Um, we've had several leads, we've had several discussions over, over a number of years with different groups. American groups, um, European groups, um, you know, groups from China also we were discussing them. But um, this group has indicated that they have the capacity um, to um, advance the, the conceptual drawings of the airport. And having done that, then we have to do all of the necessary EIAs, all the necessary um, um, geological testing done up over there. Um, and so the number of things that one has to take into consideration before you actually start the commencement of the airport. The first ever trade and employment exposition came to an end on Wednesday after three full days of networking among small businesses, youths and employers. The numerous tents arranged on the grounds of the National Stadium housed a melange of products and services on display for willing viewers. GIS News got feedback from people on site who shared their opinions and experiences of the event. We spoke with Christine Lavenier, an employee of Vernie Moyes, a seamstress from Petit Savan. She do weddings, children's clothing, adults' clothing, outing clothes, cushion covers, you know, sheet sets. The expo was to make people know what we can do and know that we are in town, available in town, so they could get their clothes done and their curtains done and all that. Well, it has been okay for the past two days. We also came across Secret Garden out of Watton Waven, an organic bath and body care line which boasts a variety of soaps. We have um, coffee, cocoa, oats milan lavender, glory cedar, sulfur, moringa and mangosteen. Yeah, we have um, soaps for different types of skin conditions such as eczema which is very prevalent in Dominica so we try to, you know, help people with that. So we um, offer like spa treatments, like if the person wants a back, a back or full body massage, they can get that, reflexology and also counseling if they would like to get counseling and how to go, you know, into the natural field. Marlon says the expo was an experience which definitely requires repeats. And if so, the Secret Garden will definitely be back. I can say that it's a very good experience in terms of networking, seeing that we are just starting to let the public become more aware of us. 
and they are coming in, we are getting back their feedbacks on the product, so it's a really good experience. The skills of Junella Truckman's freelance secretarial services were also part of exhibits throughout the past three days. We offer secretarial services to small organizations, individuals, students, anybody who is desirous of doing something secretarial, having something typed or so. We also do rapporteuring, and we, we organize workshops and take minutes at meetings and so on for NGOs and organizations. The booth was shared by the Dominica Association of Administrative Professionals, which is currently on a membership drive. Catherine Stephen was asked her opinion on the three-day event. That's a very good thing for Dominica. And I think if other institutions really put them things together, I think Dominica will reach a far place especially for visitors that, you know, coming to the country. Economics major at the Dominica State College, Danielia Paul, told us what she saw. I saw some local um, wines, like it had cherry wine and carambola wine. I saw some clothing from King's Garments. I saw local products like local coconut oil, local soaps, and local punches like rum punch passion fruit punch, coconut punch, and I got to sample the punch and the wine. They were both very nice. She says she now feels inspired that there are options for small businesses in Dominica and believes that if she were to open her own, there would be a market. GIS will bring you more from that activity in a subsequent newscast. Meantime, the island's Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, sees the National Employment Programme and the Employment and the Trade Exposition as ways of creating the environment for productive youth to thrive. The Finance Minister was speaking at the launch of the programme on Monday. He acknowledged that the island is rife with productive youth who are only seeking avenues to make meaningful contributions. The vast majority of our Dominican young people walk the straight and narrow path. They are decent young people deserving of an opportunity. They kept the end of the bargain and went to school, applied themselves, and are now prepared and willing to contribute to the growth and development of this country. We as adults have a duty to assist them in so doing. Prime Minister Skerritt says in return for their readiness, the elders must do their part and create the avenues where young people can be put to work. They are our children, our relatives, our neighbors and friends. We owe it to them to create and give them a positive start of life. So notwithstanding the ravages of the global economic recession, the government of the Dominican Labour Party recognized that our trained and skilled young people and women, young men and women, have kept the end of the bargain by graduating and qualifying of themselves for meaningful places in the job market. We feel very strongly that society as a whole must acknowledge and reward them for this. On that note, Finance Minister Honorable Skerg anticipates noteworthy economic growth ahead within the next 18 months, likely due to the stimulation of the National Employment Program. Notwithstanding the pronouncements of the naysayers, there are clear and positive indicators and projections of economic acceleration in the months ahead. In every, every sphere of economic activity, particularly tourism, agriculture, banking and other services, prospects for the next 12 to 18 months are very good. We have, for example, several projects, hotel construction, geothermal project, major roadworks, the new hospital, to name a few. But notwithstanding these exciting projects, I ask myself, was it fair to ask young people who have been waiting for one year, two years, and even more, to wait another 18 months? The answer was clearly no. We decided that we had to bite the bullet and become the catalyst for the embrace and recruitment of our trained young people into the workforce. The Elias Nasi Foundation made donations totaling $67,500 to 38 institutions and individuals on Wednesday. Checks were handed out to daycare centers, 
preschools, homes for the elderly, health services, spiritual institutions, and centenarians. Special contributions were also made to five retired employees of Elias Nassif. One small business, 365 MMP, received the cash awards as the foundation's choice of small business of the year. Philip Nassif, chairman of the Elias Nassif Foundation, revealed that this year the contribution to early childhood education was increased. We have recognized over the past years the importance of early childhood education and its contribution to the development of the young. With our desire to further support early childhood education, we have decided to increase the number of preschools receiving donations. The schools selected are some of the top progressive ones as well as a number of needy preschools requiring support and upgrade. A total of $19,000 will be distributed among the selected preschools. The feature address at the handing over ceremony, which was held at the Fortier Hotel, was delivered by former Minister for Education Rupert Sorrento. Sorrento spoke on the topic, the importance of early childhood education and its contribution to the young. Sorrento stressed that early childhood is a suitable time to adequately stimulate the young in order to ensure a strong and positive adult life. He highlighted some of government's commitments to the development of early childhood education. The government of Dominica last year enunciated a policy that seeks to move Dominica towards universal early childhood education. And in this context, standards have been established for the registration of preschools and daycare centers that enable them to qualify for government subventions and other support. An early childhood education teacher training program has been developed at the Dominica State College to address the need for trained teachers at preschools and daycare centers. And it is hoped that many more teachers will take advantage of that facility. This is the foundation's 18th year making donations to various sectors of the Dominican society. And this has been the English segment of the news. Mark Ferson St. Louis is next with the Creole highlights. Hello, good morning. We have been asking Novella Creole, no more, say Mark Ferson St. Louis. Premièrement, the government Dominic lance a program to engage Genes at Tapi Travail. Genes, qui pas travail, qui a tapé opportunity to engage Co Ayo, et puis diverses institutions fait travail, et puis gouvernement capé Ayo. Pendant ces jeunes là engagés co à yo, même nestam, il a expecté qu'il y ait des entraînements. Le programme ça l'a conduit pendant ILO, ça c'est International Labour Organization, qui a créé assez pays pour faire plus baisser la situation des jeunes qui ne pas travailler. Le ministre pour l'Employment, Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, fait parole que le programme là a créé en phase, il y a un mentorship programme, ça c'est pour les gens. Il y a une exposition aussi pour place en Stadium Windsor Park qui a formé par l'activité de cela. Nous avons plus de détails à l'autre section de la nouvelle en créole. En la nouvelle, la Fondation Elias Nassif a continué à faire donation par l'institution tout le monde en pays. La Fondation a fait donation 67 500 dollars la genou pour diverses organisations et puis institutions jeunes. Chairman Philippe Nassif. Ensemble et puis d'autres membres de la Fondation a donné ces cérémonies où il a fait ces présentations. Madame Nafali Samson, c'est secrétaire de la Nassif Foundation. Tous les années, um, il a la Nassif Foundation hein, a fait des donations pour diverses institutions et des organisations. Les gens qui ont fait des cœurs, les jeunes, les jeunes. Et bien, je aujourd'hui, là, nous mettons une spéciale attention en les. Early childhood education, parce que nous croyons ça c'est très important. Et bien, je dis à nous que je suis contre 19. 19 000 dollars pour, pour early edu, childhood education. Donc, so, nous sommes bien contents que tout le monde vienne. Je dis là, nous sommes des gens qui sont en l'âge, qui sont plus de 100 ans, nous sommes des familles qui sont en Et bien, nous faisons ça tous les ans pour. Really, oui, on peut bien aussi jouer pour tant de well et vers pour faire au sauf qui il a cette foundation qui a réussi à pousser tout ça au café. En la nouvelle, Embassy People's Republic of China à Dominique fait présentation 5 000 dollars pour institution Chances à Jimet. 
institution sans là qui établi par gouvernement dominique car one service bas enfant qui abandonné People's Republic of China fait présentation large là pour chances dépenser pour institution là et va roche qui chef institution là bien plaisir pour donner cela roche aussi qu'à bas commitment ou tu peux enfant qui abandonné en pays là car le venez enfant déjà tapé attention aux institution là depuis où ouvert la porte en 2 millions institution là qu'a financé par gouvernement dominique et puis donation au secteur privé finalement des groupes travailleurs qui travaillent en projet de l'eau en Guambé monsieur Edward Regis c'est officier relations publiques pour compagnie d'Awasco mania d'Awasco qui fait ça nous a commencé avec en sept travailleurs hold um um tête l'aller pour descendre pour vivre en Chimé Highland, Chimé Akigale Highland, avec un autre set de travailleurs qui a commencé à faire um, Chimé um, Highland pour monter à um, tête là. Ça a été six semaines. Avec les ça fini, nous avons commencé encore à faire boutique Zephyrin pour descendre en dépôt avec un autre set qui a commencé à faire des ponts pour monter pour vivre Zephyrin. Avec ça a été quatre semaines. Concernant tout, et qui a pris 10 semaines pour le pour projet d'Awasco. Et bien, quand ça a fait, le projet a même pour finir, um, uh, pour faire Chimea, pour ranger Chimea, c'est Drain Live et Chimea en Gombe. Ça aussi, il a fait. Et bien, nous avons demandé pour comparaison tout le monde, c'est mon qui a fait, c'est mon qui a conduit fait, avec um, peuple pep la même en Gombe. Nous avons demandé pour tout le monde pour, pour nous faire cette qui en février, temps pour mars. Nous avons un bon chemin avec tout le monde qui est bien rangé. Messieurs, mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nous faire la croyance pour à présent. Non, moi, c'est Mac Fosso Salus. Au revoir. Coming up next, your tip of the day. Do you have uncovered water storage drums around your home? Do you dispose of old tires, cans, and old containers capable of holding water anywhere in your environment? Are you being bitten by mosquitoes, particularly at dusk and early morning? Do you keep houseplants in water? Do you spend your hard-earned cash to control mosquitoes? Has your community experienced dengue fever outbreaks? If your answer is yes to at least three questions above, you are at risk to dengue fever. Join the fight against dengue fever. The responsibility for a dengue-free Dominica lies with you. So, get rid of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. mosquito. Air pain during plane takeoff and landing can turn the toughest adult into a crying baby. So how do you think your little one feels? Soothe the pressure in the inner ear by popping a piece of gum and avoiding bottle or breastfeeding close to departure and landing times. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Moving Matthew. Thank you for watching.